my 2018 review because it is now June and I'm going to be moving away from Azerbaijan in about three weeks and if I don't review these books now I probably will not be able to review them because the, I will be moving to a different country for my next job. So if I don't review them now then while I have them here, I will probably forget. So the 2018 book review will probably be in parts. It'll probably be what I read during my summer break. And then when I move to, I don't want to say anything yet, knock on wood, because I'm just not 100% sure where we're going. So, yeah. Okay. So, you guys know the drill. I'm going to start with the book that did the worst and work my way up to what I thought was the best. So I do have an F category book this year. This is the Hochnama, and I will not be able to say this person's name. Sap Sapamirat Turkimbashi. That's actually not his real name. Turkimbashi is the name he took on when he became president of Turkmenistan. So anyway, this is the book written by the first president of Turkmenistan. I use the word president very loosely because he is actually a very well-known dictator. He massively oppressed his people. The new president is also a big time dictator and oppressor. Not quite as badly as this man was. Uh, Basically, during his reign, it was, it's still almost impossible. It's still really difficult to get a visa to go to Turk, Turkmenistan. It cost me a lot of money to go there. Uh, and honestly, it's not worth it. <laughs> but I went to Turkmenistan, and I was very interested in reading this because it's kind of like a collector's item. It's like, it's like the equivalent of the Red Book by Chairman Mao and stuff like that. This basically has the philosophies of this first president and what he thought people in this country should live by and stuff. He also had them worship him as a god, kind of like North Korea. So, but this book is... T oh, and not only that, during his reign, he, w he actually canceled several courses, like chemistry, physics. He canceled a whole bunch of courses, and he made it mandatory to teach this book uh, in schools. To the point where people had to be able to had to memorize the whole book because in they could be stopped by police on the street and be asked to like say some part of the book by heart you know i don't know what the consequences were if they weren't able to do it but yeah this book is terrible um it's really an homage to himself he writes a lot about he tries in this book to kind of give Turkmen people, Turkmen, like a little bit of national pride, which I think is nice, but the statements he makes are just ridiculous. Like, he, like the Turkmen invented the wheel, and the Turkmen invented fire, and the Turkmen did all this stuff, and I'm like, mm, I don't know, that's true. You know, so there's a lot of things in here that are a little bit silly. It's very, very repetitive. Very repetitive. He constantly points out this guy called Agas Khan. Um, like every five pages he, he mentions this guy called Agas uh, August Khan. Sorry. I even wrote here like a little note like, oh my god, I cannot read about August Khan anymore. I mean, this guy lived in 650 A.D. I mean, if you have nobody else that is Turkmen to talk about since 650 AD, like, it, yeah, it's, it's really repetitive. And then there's like, there's this huge chapter where all he does is, no, where is it? Here, we go into this chapter here and then it, all it is is just, he explains all the different tribes and where all the different like names of different people from this tribe, you know, and all these things were like, look, 1101. I mean, just like, oh my God, 
Who is going to memorize that? It, it's just it's just bad. It's poorly written, or or rather poorly translated. There's a lot of grammar and um, syntax mistakes. He tries to, like the women in Turkmenistan are forced to dress in traditional garb. They can't really interact with men. At one when he was still the president, if a foreigner came to Turkmenistan and wanted to marry a Turk. A Turkmen woman, then they'd have to pay something ridiculous, like fifty thousand dollar fine. Like he's super, but then like in the book, he's trying to make it seem like women are equal in this country. It's just like the whole thing is just ridiculous and very bad. But it is a collector's piece, so and you can't. It's not in print anymore since that president died. So I was very happy that I actually found one and in English, so I could read it. Okay, um, D category, no, D, I don't have anything. C category, the first one is this. And this is written by Nizami, who is the most famous Azab Azeri author of all time, but he also lived like several hundred years ago. And his most famous, so he wrote plays or poetry, or epic poetry, or whatever you want to call it. The most famous, famous one he wrote is called Leili and Machnum, or Mejnum, uh, and Majnum, Mej Leili and Mejnum, which is the Romeo and Juliet equivalent of Azerbaijan. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. <sighs> It's basically Romeo and Juliet. There's not a lot to say to it. Uh, I hate this book format, though, because I personally like this kind of book. What is this called? Not hardcover. Softcover? Is that what it's called? I like softcover books, and I like them in this little rectangle format because someday I'm hoping when I settle down to have a little library and I can put all my books, and this is going to end up having to be like a coffee table because of the size of it, though. Another C. Der Russe ist einer der Birken liebt by Olga Kriasnova. Um, yeah, I don't need to talk about it. This is a C. The only thing that's funny is I've actually bought this in Germany before moving to Azerbaijan, not asking for books related to Azerbaijan at all, but then it turns out that the main female character is Azeri. So I thought that was kind of funny when I got here and I started reading it. Then Fo by J.M. Kutze, 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 and I have to admit, <laughs> I bought this book 90, my, actually, completely just because of the cover. I saw this cover, and it was like a complete impulse, but I was like, this is one of the most beautiful covers I've ever seen. It's so gorgeous, and I just was like, I have to have it. I need to have this book. It's just so beautiful. So, and I mean, it wasn't expensive. It's a tiny little book. And I actually have to say, so basically this book is a retelling of Robinson Crusoe. But, um, Daniel Defoe wrote Robinson Crusoe, right? Yes. And basically it's about, they're saying that there was a woman also stranded on the island. And she spends time with Robinson Crusoe and uh, Friday on this island. And they actually all three managed to escape, but I think Robinson Crusoe then dies on the boat back to England from something, maybe dysentery or something, I forget. And she asks Daniel Defoe to write the story of Robinson Crusoe, and it kind of goes about how Daniel Defoe completely changes it and writes the book that is now Robinson Crusoe and how she's actually upset because he completely took her out of the story. He changed a lot of things that she's telling him were the realities. Like, so that was actually really an interesting retelling. And it would have been a B, but then in the end, it kind of, like she falls out of contact with Daniel Defoe. And then it's just her constantly like, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? I'm not in contact with him and I don't have a job. And it, like it, the story just kind of changed halfway through and I didn't care for it. We Are All Made of Glue by Marina Levica. 
C. Okay, B categories. Elizabeth Kabatek, Kabat. Kleine Verbrechen erhalten die Freundschaft. And in English, this would be um, Verbrechen, small criminal, hmm, criminal activities are good for friendship. Hmm, I translate this. People who commit crimes together have friendships together or something. Kind of like that's how you would kind of translate it. And this is a really cute book because it's definitely, again, a topic I never read about. These three people randomly run into each other. And because of, like, some background story, they end up having to commit these crimes to be able to survive. And then one small crime turns into a bigger crime. Before you know it, all of a sudden, these three people who were strangers, like, just a week ago, are now, like, best friends and buddies through their criminal activity and become massive, like, bank robbers and all this kind of stuff. So I thought it was a really cute story. The, oh, like, it could have been an A, but I hated the ending. The ending really just kind of goes Pfft. So it really looks, it seemed like the author just kind of at some point lost interest. And the last two chapters are just chapters. There's just no real resolution, nothing. It's just kind of like all of a sudden they're on this, all of a sudden they, they get caught by the police, but I don't know. They don't say, okay, the police understand that all these crimes were a mistake or anything like that. It's just kind of like, they were caught by the police at the end. And I'm like, hmm, I didn't care for that. Uh, this is the book I'm currently reading. And it's Das Leben fällt wohin es will, Petra Hülsmann. I would translate this to life does what it wants, or you can control life, I guess, could be kind of. Um, I haven't finished it yet, as you can see, but I'll be finishing before I leave Azerbaijan. And it's a cute story. It's nothing amazing, but it's a cute little summer read. And actually, I think part of the reason why I'm giving this a B rather than like a C or something is because I actually found this in like the dollar bin in some kind of cheapy store. And for a dollar bin find, I actually think this is a very good book. I think it's pretty rare to find dollar bin books that turn out to be decent. Okay, and I have two A's for this year so far. And one of them I don't have here with me because I borrowed that book, so I'll have to include like a picture. But it's super famous, so I don't think you guys will probably all know it. And that's 1984 by George Orwell. Uh, as I said, I love dystopian future books. I think it's very smart how he's writing about people, how people can be controlled by the media and all this kind of stuff, which is something I tr do believe. It's something that in the past I've ranted about in my videos. I think a lot of us, we think we really truly believe and think the way we do, but a lot of it really is fed to us by the media. So I thought that was, I think it's a very clever book. I definitely think it is something that should be school reading. And if you read it, I think you really come away with like a lot of good knowledge from it. Uh, at the same time, I will say I still prefer Animal Farm by him. I just, because this is actually one of the few, I just wrote it down here, I don't know why I'm showing you guys this. This is one of the few books where I do feel he could have, it could have been longer. The story could have been fleshed out a little bit more. Uh, so, but otherwise, it's, I think it's a great read. And the other A is The Art of War, which is by Sun Tzu. Wait, huh? The Book of Lord Shang, Shang Yang. Okay, I don't know who it is. Is it by Sun Tzu or Shang Yang? Ah, maybe Sun Tzu is, is Chinese for the art of war. Anybody know Chinese? And this book I actually thought was... It, I didn't care so much for the part where... like there's, I mean, there's It's a really small book. There's a couple of chapters. I didn't really care for the chapters the way they talked about how you should set up your military and, you know, if, I don't know, if you're coming from a high place, you need to have this kind of formation. Like, that stuff I thought was kind of boring. But he also talks a lot about what it is to be a good leader and qualities that a leader needs to have and management skills and, like, really preparing for whatever it is you need to do in life and the consequences that come from it. 
And that I thought was really smart. And I think that part can also be adapted to day-to-day -day life these days. Yeah. Okay, so that is it of 2018 so far. And this will be the first part of 2018. When I finish 2018, I'll smush it all together and maybe upload it if I feel like it. That's it. Bye.